Hello everyone, today's video we're going to talk about how you can enable asynchronous user group policy processing on your enterprise Windows desktops. You may wonder why we'd want to improve the user group policy processing time. Most likely we'd do it to improve your users log on time. So if you've got a lot of group policies applying at log on and it's causing your log ons to take a long period of time, this will show you how to shorten that down. This kind of goes hand in hand with a series I've been doing over on my blog at james-rankin.com talking about Windows log on time optimizations part four, which I've just published was to do with the user GPO processing. So this helps you out with a part of that article. This is a fairly advanced video if you're, you're looking at this from a, a kind of a layman's perspective. So it's really aimed at systems administrators, consultants and architects. Obviously this relies on your devices being in a traditional Active Directory domain services deployment, which most of you probably are, I would have thought. Now you may be wondering what exactly is asynchronous user group policy processing mode. It's a fairly complicated subject, so rather than go into it in this video, might I suggest that you just hop over to my website at gems-ranking.com and if you type into the search bar here the word asynchronous, which should then pull you up straight on the top there, an article that goes into an in-depth sort of description and discussion about asynchronous processing mode and how it differs from the normal mode. Just for the purpose of this video, obviously when a user logs on, a portion of that log on is the time that it does user group policy processing. If it's in synchronous mode, that means it processes all of those policies one by one after each other. And it obviously takes a longer period of time. If you can get your users logging on in asynchronous mode, it basically means that it simply jumps ahead to the next stage of the logon and all those policies are then processed in the background. So obviously it takes a short period of time. So that's what we're aiming at. As I said, if you want to understand the actual ins and outs behind synchronous and asynchronous processing modes and lots more about group policy besides, then go and read the article that's linked over there. So we're going to perform our testing on server 2019 rather than Windows 10. The reason for this is I wanted to show you how to do it on both Windows 10 and server 2019, but the steps are very, very similar. In fact, there are just a couple of little extra steps for server 2019, which we'll call out. So this way we should be able to cover them both off without taking up too much of your time. Obviously, a lot of people in the EUC space still use server 2019 RDSH to deliver multi-user applications and desktops. So the first thing we're going to do is establish a baseline and show you what mode it's running in. So the first thing that we need to do is quickly log on via Citrix to our RDSH 2019 instance. Now, usually a good sign that you're using synchronous mode is if you see what's on the screen right now where it says it's applying group policy, internet settings policy and things like that, that's an indication that it's usually running through in synchronous mode. So we can actually find out for sure if we switch to an admin session on the same server, which is over here, and open up the event viewer. If you go to the applications and services log, into Microsoft, into Windows, and scroll down until you find the log that says group policy and there there's a single log called the operational log right click that filter it by event id 5340 and the very last one should tell you what mode it was in you can see there group policy processing mode is foreground synchronous right so that's the mode it locked on we want to try and switch that to asynchronous mode now if i switch over to my uber agent monitoring over here and we just quickly set the time to after 2.30, which is good, and click on Submit. And just want to refresh that. We should hopefully see a breakdown of that logon time that we've just had on the machine, just showing you here how having views into your logon times is very, very helpful. So you can see here the total logon took 10 seconds, but of that logon time, and I'll just get a highlight individual there. Seven and a half seconds of that log on time was taken up by group policy processing. So if we can switch that into asynchronous mode, we should say that drop right down and therefore our log on time will be considerably shorter as well. Just to give ourselves a solid baseline, I'm gonna run 10 log ons and take the average, but I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch those log ons. So I'm just gonna quickly go and do them now and I shall pick it back up as soon as I finish and I have a new average to show you. 
So I've completed my 10 logons. Let's have a look at our Uber agent data now. And as you can see, we have the total logon duration has actually gone up. We're at 10 seconds for the first logon, but it's averaged out to 18 now because we've had here one, two, three, four logons that took longer than that 10 seconds. However, the group policy processing time, which is shown in the green here, has stayed quite static. So we've got an average of 7.2 seconds. Obviously, whatever's causing my logons to get slightly longer isn't to do with group policy processing. So we're not worried about that. So we've established a good baseline now, about seven seven and a half seconds for the group policy processing time. We're now going to show you how to enable asynchronous policy processing and see if we can bring that down. Now, to enable asynchronous policy processing, we need to do a few things. The first one of these is we need to turn on a couple of group policy objects. Now, on Windows 10, you need to turn on one policy object. If you are using server RDSH, you need to turn on two. So you notice I've just jumped over here to my uh, domain controller. I'm going to create a GPO called AS, if I could spell, Asynchronous GPO Processing. And we're going to link that straight to the OU that our test server is within. So you can see it's here. Right, the first setting that we need to set up, this one needs to be set up on both Windows 10 and Server 2019 RDS H is the one in and i'll just scroll down through it. it's computer config policies administrative templates system logon and it is the policy for always work for the network at computer startup and logon you need to set this to disabled now that's all you need to set policy wise on Windows 10 but on server 2016 there is an additional one that's an admin templates system group policy and it's this one right at the top here allow asynchronous user group policy processing when logging on through remote desktop services you need to set this one to enabled so make sure both those policies are set if you're using RDSH and just the first one is set if you're using the Windows 10 client. So there are just a couple more things you need to do to enable asynchronous processing. One of the caveats for asynchronous processing is that in order to use asynchronous processing, the user has to have logged onto the machine already. Now that's okay if they have logged onto the machine already or if you're using a profile management solution because that will essentially also make the operating system think they've logged on previously. However, if the user genuinely hasn't logged on at all and has, you know, if you're using profile management, if they don't have a stored profile, can we trick the operating system into thinking that the user has logged on previously? Well, actually, you can. And it doesn't matter whether you're using Windows 10 or RDSH server or whatever. If you log on to your, your base image and actually edit the registry for the default profile, you can insert a couple of values in here and make it think that the user's logged on already. So if you go to the HK users hive and click on file and load hive, and in the window that pops up, you type C colon backslash users backslash default. And in this folder, you'll see the registry hive for the default user profile. If you load this up, give it a name, call it default. Then if you expand this, so not the one with dot default, the one that I've just called default, and go to um, underneath their software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, and then you need to add a key called group space policy. And under there, click on new key and add a key called state. And then in this key called state, you add two values. So we've got a new D word value and call this one next refresh mode and give that a value of two. And then another D word value add in there and call this next refresh reason and leave that with a value of zero. Now the important thing to remember is once you've done this, click on the top of the hive again, go to file and choose unload hive, click on yes, and now the default profile on your base image machine will now have those two entries in, which means that the operating system will think it's logged onto this machine previously when it loads those entries from the default profile, and then it will allow you to use asynchronous processing mode. 
So the final caveat to getting asynchronous group policy processing working is to make sure you're not using any of the group policy client side extensions that force you into synchronous mode. So if I just jump across to my domain controller over here, have a look at our group policy objects. First one that will force synchronous mode is a software installation policy. I dare say if you're using software installation policies in group policy, you've probably got bigger problems than your log on times because they're not very reliable and not very scalable. But just for posterity, if you've got a computer config, policies, software settings, software installation policies are set up in here. So if you've got any of those, you'll need to remove them, but I wouldn't recommend using them anyway. But the second one that will force, the second client side extension that will force you into synchronous policy mode, policy processing mode, is the folder redirection one and folder redirection is quite widely used if i look at this jpo here that we've got linked you can see we've got two bits set up in the folder redirection csa so what you'll need to do is go to edit into policies windows settings and folder redirection find the ones that are set up and set them to not configured rather than anything at all so turn all those off. But if you still want to do folder redirection, but not use the folder redirection CSA, what you can do is you can go into preferences, Windows settings and registry, and you can actually set up a registry and that'll do folder redirection for you without using the folder redirection CSA. And you basically go to, if I remember off the top of my head, HK current user, software, Microsoft, Windows current version Explorer and I think it's in here user shell folders and set whichever one of these folders you want to do the redirection for so for example if you wanted to redirect the desktop you would select desktop from there and instead of putting that in there you would put the UNC path to where you want it to go to so file server gems are desktop and do it like that now that'll do folder redirection for you but what it won't do is it won't allow you to do the the kind of on the fly move and setting of permissions and things like that so it is slightly limited but as i say if you want asynchronous policy processing you've got to turn off that folder redirection cse so using the registry cse instead is a perfectly viable way of doing that. So make sure you've got software installation policies turned off and make sure if you want to do folder redirection, you're doing it through the registry CSE, not through the folder redirection CSE. And I think it's also important to note in a Citrix world, Citrix UPM has the capability to do folder redirection through policy that uses the same CSE um, as the, the one you don't want to use, the one that forces serious mode. So don't do folder redirection through UPM either. So we're all done. So now we just need to log back on and see whether our log on time's improved and whether it's in synchronous or asynchronous mode. So let's jump across to Storefront here and let's launch the same desktop that we launched last time. As I said, we should be able to tell what the mode is, well, <laughs> what the mode is by the fact that we don't get any feedback on the screen. So no feedback that's actually showing which CSA is being processed. So if we just jump across to an admin session on this server across here and pull up the event viewer, go into applications and service logs, Microsoft, Windows, and scroll down until we find group policy. Go to the operational log, filter the log by event ID 5340, which it already is, because I have been using it with the filter previously. And you can see right at the top there, user group policy processing mode is foreground asynchronous so it's gone on in asynchronous mode which is exactly what we wanted and you see how the logon was so much faster so for the very final part and apologies it seems to have got to get a bit dark here because we've been in a meeting in between we're gonna have a quick look at our uber agent data and see if our logon time has improved now Here's the Uber agent data, right? And straight away, you might look at that graph and think, well, your log on time's got worse. Now, if you remember what I said about asynchronous processing, what it does is it basically, instead of process, processing the user GPOs one by one while the user logs in, 
it essentially just lets them continue in the background and presents the desktop to the user. So the group policy processing is actually going on after you've logged on, essentially. It's been offloaded. Now, the Uber agent data, this big green bit here, is taking into account the fact that it's measured the user group policy processing, but that's actually no longer part of the total logon time. So you're saying the logon time has dropped from what was about 10 to 18 seconds, I think. Now the average logon time is six seconds. Now the group policy processing time has actually gone up to 14 seconds, but the whole logon time has actually dropped. And that's because the group policy processing is continuing after the logon, and because it's now contending with other user session processes to complete, it actually really in, takes a bit longer to complete. But what you will see is if we look at the raw data, most of the logons are three or four seconds. We've got one weird outlier in the middle here that took 30 seconds, but the other 11 logons that I've got there, the total logon time is between three and four seconds. So we've reduced the logon time massively, even though in reality the group policy processing time has gone up. What matters is what the user experiences, and they will notice that there, I mean, you can see when I did that logon and recorded it, it was much, much quicker. The user felt like it logged on almost straight away instead of taking sort of between 10 and 18 seconds as it does before. So that asynchronous policy processing mode that we're now in, even though in your statistics it will say group policy is taking longer to process, the user logon time is vastly low. As you can see, we're logging on, apart from this one outlier in the middle here that skewed us up to an average of six seconds. I don't quite know what went on there, but odd things do happen in the lab. Three or four seconds is the logon time. So there you go. That is how you can put asynchronous policy processing for your user GPOs, just a few little tweaks required and possibly get doing some adaptation of your folder redirection policies. But you can go from having log on times of, you know, as I said, in our example here, it was 18 seconds down to about three or four seconds. But, you know, in your environment, you will see a big drop. I recommend, uh, I recommend, in my experience, I observe about... 50% is the minimum benefit you will get within your log on time in a typical enterprise environment. So I hope that's been useful for you and thanks very much for watching.